It's October, and what better way to kick off the Halloween season than by reviewing Frankenstein Conquers the World, one of my absolute favorite kaiju films from Toho that doesn't feature Godzilla. Ironically, Frankenstein Conquers was going to be a Godzilla movie at one point, but we'll get into that later. Frankenstein Conquers is a unique kaiju film from Ishiro Honda. It manages to be fun while providing dark, thought-provoking themes. What sets it apart is Honda's directing and treatment of his version of Frankenstein's monster. It's one of the few tokusatsu films where Honda puts the most effort into everything. A perfect example is the opening. It's a silent scene, but the audience knows what's happening without having any dialogue or exposition being fed to them. It's a brilliant example of subtle filmmaking. Another great example would be the shot of a plane flying over Hiroshima. It's such a small moment, but it's super effective. Honda doesn't provide us with context, but if you know your history, you know what the context is. This is great craftsmanship on Hishiro Honda's part. Honda manages to deliver a Japanese Frankenstein in a way that works from a Japanese perspective. Honda creates strong parallels by having Frankenstein be born from the atom bomb, be a survivor of the bomb, and a victim of the bomb. While some Hiroshima survivors suffered from severe burns and radiation poisoning, Frankenstein suffers from the opposite. The radiation makes him grow too big and strong, so much so that society sees him as a monster and condemns him to death. The film is more of a character study than a monster on the loose movie. Unlike most incarnations of Frankenstein, Toho's version is more sympathetic. In many ways, he's a child who doesn't know his own strength, who's still trying to learn right from wrong. He's just trying to survive, and at times, he actually saves people. Koji Furuhata delivers a great performance as Frankenstein. At times, his performance feels quirky, but it gives a level of humor and humanity to his Frankenstein. Unlike Russ Tamalin from Gargantuous, Nick Adams was clearly into his performance. His energy and charisma shines throughout the entire film. Kumi Mizuno gives a decent performance, and even though the relationship between her and Adam's character is somewhat ambiguous, there's still a level of chemistry brought to light by their performances and possible real-life love affair. Tadao Takashima is decent. He keeps backtracking whether Frankenstein should be treated as a human or a monster, and I feel he should have been the villain who changes his mind after Frankenstein saves him. Yoshio Tsuchiya's role is somewhat baffling. He comes off as a plot device for the origins of the monsters. He delivers Frankenstein's heart to Hiroshima, which triggers the events of the movie, and he's the first to encounter Baragon, which leads him to tip off Nick Adams, but it's a subplot that goes nowhere because the characters still encounter Baragon even without Tsuchiya. Speaking of which, Baragon himself is equally as baffling. The movie never explains where he comes from or why he's there. The best they try to explain is that prehistoric creatures went underground to survive, but this is a lazy origin just to shoehorn an extra monster. Also, Baragon looks too cute to be threatening. Akira Fukube delivers one of his best scores. It's dark, brooding, and atmospheric. It captures the gothic and tragic nature of Frankenstein, especially the Frankenstein vs. Baragon battle themes. Eiji Tsuburaya's special effects are solid, though I wouldn't consider this one of his best works. There are lots of questionable effects, and he gives Baragon a very campy jumping ability, but Tsuburaya manages to succeed in making Frankenstein appear gigantic against well-designed miniature sets. The final battle between the monsters is simply awesome and makes for a very entertaining climax. Overall, Frankenstein Conquers the World is one of Ishiro Honda's best films, and to an extent, one of the best Frankenstein film adaptations to date. It may have not been Mary Shelley's original intention, but I'm sure she would have found this version enjoyable. Frankenstein Conquers had an interesting development history. It originally began as a sequel to The Human Vapor called Frankenstein vs. The Human Vapor. Then Toho got the rights to King Kong vs. Prometheus, which was originally conceived as King Kong meets Frankenstein, but Toho replaced Frankenstein with Godzilla. Toho then had Takeshi Kimura write Godzilla vs. Frankenstein, which was redeveloped into the movie we know and love today. An alternate ending involving Frankenstein fighting a giant octopus was shot for the international release, but it went unused, but I personally kind of prefer this ending. I know it makes no sense, but this ending kind of makes you feel like that world is inhabited by giant monsters. 
Frankenstein Conquers spawned a sequel called War of the Gargantuas, another personal favorite of mine, but honestly, Frankenstein Conquers the World is the better film. Despite a few issues, it's a great film with stronger characters, story, and it's one of Ishiro Honda's very best directed films. I award it 3.5 stars out of 4.